You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the Cricket Podcast. I can't believe I'm saying this, but he's done it again. Tuatcha has pulled off the Tuatcha. He invented a verb. He's executed the verb twice in a week. He's, he's basically my favourite cricketer of all time, I think, at this point. I, I, I'm almost speechless about what I just witnessed. So bear with us while we try and find a way through uh, that you know, monstrously good contest in the next 25 minutes or so. I'm Jack Cope. I'm joined today by Ronan Alexander from Scouting Cricket. Ronan, um, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks again for having me on. That was some ending to that game. Just totally came from nowhere to Latia again. Just those last two sixes. But it all came from that silly single with three balls to go to get him back on strike. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, normally we do like a whole messages for the listeners thing and so on. But I think we just have to talk about it. I have to talk about it to get it out of the system because, it's, you know, I'm not going to be able to process it in the next 10 minutes. Odin Smith, what's he given? 21? I, I haven't even written it down. I've just written them off. Like, after Rabada bowled that quite good 19th over, um, after the run out, like, the, 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 the and, yeah. and, and hard it goes, I, I was just like, well, that's it. You know, it's, it's, it's game over. Uh, what does Miller, Miller flicks one for four, nearly goes for six, and I was like, at that point, I was like, well, if he'd hit it that another yard, then I'd be interested. I'll keep the game on in the background, but I'll set up the live stream, I'll download the bits I've got to do. Um, as you all know, Ronan, I managed to get that all wrong off air. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I thought, well, you know, I'll save a little bit of time uh, and try and come up with something to say about a game that Gujarat should have won really easily. And then, and then three balls to go. A great delivery from Odin Smith wide. Um, uh, Tuacha can't do anything with it. Uh, not Tuacha, sorry, Miller can't do anything with it. And then, yeah, he does a Stuart Broad. I mean, it's, it's like a completely useless run out. It means absolutely nothing throwing the ball at the stumps at that point. There's nothing yeah, to be gained. Yeah, just take the dot ball. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was it Simon O'Doul on commentary? He's the only one in the whole you know, box who's, who's sort of aware enough to be like, well, that, you know, that could, I suppose, in theory, be costly. Then he bowls two fucking meatballs. And then... <laughs> right into the swat. <laughs> <laughs> to the short boundary. Although, to be fair, the last ball, he did try and push it across, but Tawatia moved so he could just smash it to cow corner. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I just... I, you have to love Tawatia. You have to love, like, the, 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 the ice in his veins that he must have, but also, like, the sort of, you know, raw muscle to, to just pin the ball <laughs> so far. Um, I, yeah, uh... I don't know, I guess we should probably do messages for the listeners. Um, and then I'll, I'll try and summarise that. And then we'll probably just talk some more about the, the final over and what might be. I mean, it was, I, I think there's so much to talk about in this game. There's some really interesting strategies from, from Punjab and, and some you know, quite interesting bowling changes that they came up with as well. Backloading Chahar and then some awesome death bowling. And Gill playing you know, these beautiful innings where he was timing the ball and knocking it all around the ground. Anyway, we'll get, we'll get to all of that. The messages that you need to know if you're a listener or a viewer. Um, TCP22 over at Serious Cricket. Uh, to get yourself 10% off cricket equipment before the season starts. It was sunny today in England and not actually even windy. Um, our season starts in eight days' time. A bit... We're the same, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First friendly next week. Repping some serious cricket gear oh, as well. Yeah, it's top stuff. It really <laughs> is top stuff. There's two people who can vouch for it on this show. TCP22 to get yourself a little discount there. And if you want to support the show directly, head over to patreon.com forward slash the cricket pod. Uh, from £4 a month, you get access to our Discord. Uh, you get bonus shows, one a month. Uh, this, we, we host a uh, Patreon's only Q&A. Uh, we've got a ball-by-ball ball breakdown of the whole history of the IPL in a, in a usable spreadsheet basically um it's it's sexier than it, it sounds um if you're if you're into that sort of thing um so four pound a month from patreon.com uh forward slash the cricket pod right today we'll do today's game first i think ronan and then and then i mean yesterday's game was all right. i forgot about yesterday yeah, already. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh well it was like last, yesterday's game went to like the last three balls and, and Badoni yeah, came in and, and hit six and a four or a four and a six and um, today Punjab back first, and they they did they did a it was a classic Punjab innings. I think we're going to see it a lot this year. 
everyone just goes hell for leather, uh, basically, apart from maybe Shikha Darwan, who did actually play um, by their standards of closed innings today. Uh, they found themselves in a little bit of trouble. Uh, enter Liam Livingston. He hit 64 off 27, so I think that's 124 runs in his last 59 balls in the IPL. Um, this time last week, people were saying he's never done it in the IPL, he's never done it in India. Um, I, well, he's done it twice in a row. If he does, it, if he does that one more time in the tournament, he's, you know, puts himself yeah. in, in this bracket of players that can play these like sort of miraculous middle order innings, uh, uh, middle overs innings that um, put your team in a great position. Uh, Jitta Sharma, he comes in. He looked pretty good uh, for his. Uh, I think it was his second IPL match today. Twenty three from eleven for him. Um, Odin Smith. Doesn't do that well with the bat, but it's okay. He gets the bowl later. Like he's got, yeah. there's the possibility that he can redeem himself. And it looks like the innings is sort of going to peter out. They're going at ten and over, and then with fifteen overs to go, um, Gujarat used the last over of Rashid Khan, and, and you're sort of thinking maybe they play this out or knock it around a little bit and, and tee off against. Um, the death bowling. Instead, they lose two wickets. Livingston and, and Sharat Khan, the last two batters, uh, and end up looking like they're going to be bowled out for 160, and then somehow still making it to 189, thanks to a 28-run last wicket partnership, I think. Um, <laughs> Rahul Chahar, 22 from 14. So there's a lot happened in that innings. Um, Gujarat's innings is a little bit easier to summarise. Shubman Gill was awesome. 96 from 59. Um, he played, I think batting-wise the most attractive innings I've seen in the IPL so far. He looked like he had the most talent in terms of, I don't know, I guess what you call pure batting. Like That four that he hit in the second over where he literally just blocked it. Mm. I think it was Arshdeep was bowling and it went past mid on for four. He just timed it. He couldn't have timed it yeah, any better. Mate, that, I, I, I was thinking there, and, uh, he is, um, he's Sachin Tendulkar's son-in-law, isn't he? Or, or, or to be son-in-law. It looked yeah. a little bit like the, um, the little master. Like just... No follow through whatsoever. Pure timing, jam down on the ball, and like beats. I love it when you get mid on diving as well, and it's it's yeah. like just that reach. It just aesthetically it looks so good. Um, he starts to run out of steam a little bit. Uh, Sai Sudarsan or Sutharsan, you know, someone will correct me in the chat on the, the pronunciation of that. I'm sure. <laughs> um, gets thirty five from thirty. He looked okay, but slowed down. Hardik comes in. I don't know if he's timing it, and they end up in this mad situation. Where the run rate goes from 10 and over to 15 and over for the last two overs. Rabada bowls a good over, throws the ball to Odin. And, um, well, yeah, um, that happened. Um, Carnage. That, that, that happened. Uh, Ronan, was there, was there anything before I get to the talking points I had written down that, that struck you from this game or that you really wanted to cover? Um, no, I don't know. I suppose you'll probably cover it anyway, but starting from... Punjab originally where they have Dewan and Agarwal up top and they seem to be like the kind of only sort of anchors for the innings and when Dewan goes out it's just carnage just it's like six six wicket six wicket wicket six six <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it's, it's amazing it, it, yeah I mean it's it's a completely I, I don't know if you saw today Crickviz tweeted out a graphic um I did see get that, a little yeah. bit nerdy here a graphic of um, run rates in the history of the IPL going along the x-axis and did the balls per dismissal going up the y-axis and most of the teams it's sort of linear so like usually the, the fewer wickets you lose the higher your run rate goes so it's, it's kind of a, a, an upward line of um, best fit or whatever whatever the statistical term for that is and then Gujarat are like bottom right like one of the highest run rates in the history of the IPL, but also their batters are out all the time. Like it's like 14 <laughs> pulls per dismissal. And it, it leads, I, I mean, I, I, I've been um, doing a prediction game basically with myself on, on, on Twitter, um, trying to call every IPL match before it starts. I've got six right out of, uh, out of 15 now, or six right out of 10. I thought Punjab had it today, but I, I, I did the, the sort of thing that I said before the game, I wouldn't really be surprised if they got bowled out for 80 or something like that as well, because the way they play is, is, is kind of, in a way, maybe how more teams will play in a year's time or so, or two years' time. They score a lot of runs, but they also have like absolutely zero stability versus, versus the rest of the league. And this innings like completely, it was like the perfect illustration of this. It was when the going was good, it was 
sixes and fours and you know i'm gonna track rashid khan <laughs> and, yeah. and then when it wasn't it was like uh, you know rabada being run out going for two when the ball's in the in the in the air on the way back in so i mean I, yeah I, I i i guess the question um is do you think this is sustainable for them or 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 or, or are they going down a pathway that might lead to nowhere no, I think they're going around a brand of cricket that will start to become more common. I think we'll start to see more of it. But it's something that I don't think commentators fully understand. Like when a player gets out, they're like, oh, they should just start knocking it around now, but they just keep going, which is probably the way to go. But yeah, I think as time goes on, more teams will do it. So I think there will be the, the kind of trendsetters for it. I thought that was actually really noticeable, the way the commentators reacted to how both innings went, because they both sort of went south about the 15th over mark. But in the, the Gujarat innings, nobody was saying somebody needs to hit a four or get out here. It was sort of like, oh, well, maybe they'll take it deep. Who's going to bowl the last over? Will yeah. they be able to get 20 off the last over? Whereas when Punjab were batting, even though they had 160 on the board, which is about par for batting first this year in the IPL, already with five overs to go, um, I think it was Simon O'Dall again was like, this is complete disaster. What are they doing? Like, like they were on 90 for eight or something like that. But it was, yeah. They had 160 runs. It was, it, was, it was going reasonably well. I mean, like maybe it could have gone better, but um, it, 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 it wasn't too bad. Uh, I, I suppose in that innings, the, the turning point um, when it went from sort of roses to disaster was that 15th over from Rashid Khan. Um, there's a strategic question here, and I'd be interested to hear your take on it. A lot of people who, who, who work in analysis in, in cricket, they say that one of the best indicators of who will win a contest is, is who is able to take down the opposition, opposition spinner best. One over to go of Rashid Khan, do you continue to pursue that maxim, or do you maybe think, I, I've got a better chance here against Mohamed Shami in the last four overs? I suppose it kind of depends on the situation of the game a lot of the time like if, if you're five or six wickets down but you maybe have one set batter in then maybe just take the over for seven or eight whereas if you've got loads of wickets in hand you can just go hell for weather at it so it's kind of game dependent i suppose the way that you look at it do you think they made the wrong choice in that case then to i mean i i, I don't think livingston does he gets caught on the boundary trying to pull a half track of a six it's sort of like yeah, it's one of those. He was winning that gamble quite regularly in that innings. So I don't think he, you can really ha have a go at him. But Sharrett Carr may be going for the slog sweep. Not the brightest idea. I don't know. What do you reckon? I'm never going to slag a team off that go for it. Like When they're trying to be positive and attacking, I don't want to talk that down because I'm all for it. So <laughs> No, no, fair enough. Yeah, um, it's... it's well, they, I mean, they, they certainly do go for it. Um... I yeah I I I suppose that that covers a lot of um, innings one um, I do I I I just I do think it is really strange though I mean there's they're such a fascinating team to watch and job there was one other thing that I noted was when they kind of promoted Odin Smith up the order yeah because I think it came at a time where I think the overs before it went like ten twenty. I think the over before was the Tuati over, they went for 20-odd. And then the over when they got out, um, the two wickets and two balls still went for 10. The over after was 15. It was when their weaker bowlers were on. So they're like, right, just put Odin in now and he'll smash. This over's going for 20, no matter what. Oh, he gets out first ball and, you know, people could say, oh, it was the wrong decision to promote him. But because he gets out first ball, I don't really think it is because that was probably the moment to bring in Odin Smith. That was his best chance of him whacking those quick runs rather than having him later on when Rashid Khan's bowling that last over or Lockie Ferguson bowling. That was the kind of time to maximise what Odin Smith can do. But yeah. it didn't pay off. But I couldn't see the reason behind why they did it. Where, where do you come down on Odin Smith overall? I mean, it's a bit of, there's going to be a bit of recency bias here, um, obviously, because we just saw the last over and it was, a, it was about as bad as that could have gone. Um, yeah. I mean, it literally was as bad as that could have gone. He lost. Um He's he played that he played that amazing innings, didn't he, against RCB? His bowling to me looks like it's not quite good enough for the IPL, and since then he has done nothing with the bat. Am, am I? 
Am I missing something here to say probably should be on the bench for this side? Potentially, but I think he's the guy who kind of balances their team. Because if they were to bring him out and put, say, Raja Paxa back in, what do they do with the batting order? Because everyone would have to go all over the place. So I don't know, maybe just because that balance of the team and even today he didn't bowl his full four overs, they only bowled three, so they're able to get away with him not bowling his full allotment um, if things don't go well. But on a good day, he is capable of bowling four. So I don't know, it's just maybe the balance of the team is where it kind of falls apart. I'm trying to have a look at their bench to see who they would, who they would bring in. So I think they've got Rishi Darwan and um, they have Raj Bauer. Benny Howell, I suppose, could be a like for a like swap. Benny Howell could be an interesting change, actually. I, w- I wouldn't be stunned after today if there was a little bit of a change there. Um, it's not necessarily... I mean, partly because of, you know, what happened, the disaster, um, but also because it is sort of three matches where I'm not sure Odin Smith really contributed like you would want one of your overseas players to play. And fair enough, he's probably their fourth choice overseas player. And, you know, Matt Wade's playing for Gujarat. And um, I don't know, the, who's, the, who's the guy who plays for Delhi? Uh, Rothman Powell. They're not contributing an awful lot yeah. either. Um, so maybe we were, we were holding some sort of slightly different standard. Could I arguably put Billings into that category too. Um, but um, I, I'd, really be, I'd really be interested to see Benny Howe play, I think. Um, I, 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 yeah. I think he probably fulfills a, he'd fulfill a, a clearer role terms of his bowling I think his bowling is better and I, I don't know actually if his batting is as big a downgrade on Odin Smith as some people yeah I was think. thinking that there yeah. he, he's another gung-ho batter but he also strikes you as someone who just offers a bit more stability than Odin Smith I yeah don't know. He yeah just yeah comes across that. more reliable I don't know if the stats back up but just I, I, thinking I, off the top of my head They've almost certainly, I would be almost certain about that, at least in the last two or three years. I mean, Benny Howe was a batter, so there is some fundamental batting technique there. Um, I think the, the, um, the great attraction of Odin Smith is that ask anyone who has seen him hit a six and they will tell you he hits the ball harder than <laughs> anybody in world cricket. Like, he, it's, it's, it's like beyond Andre Russell. Uh, he was hitting them into like the top deck, that huge stadium in, um, in Dubai during the T10 league. And, you know, Andre Russell's never hit it that far. He's played plenty of matches there. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, so it is, there is a huge attraction to, to sort of seeing the raw power of this guy. But I, I think maybe a little bit more polish is required before, before we get the, the, the finished article there. Um, anyway, on the, on, the, on the batting side, um, Sh- Shubman Gill, as I said, I think played... It's, it's not the innings of the IPL. Pat Cummins hit 50 and 14 balls. It's, it's, yeah. There's, there's a, 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 you know, arguably Liam Livingston's innings uh, in, in the first half of this match is, is a more productive T20 innings. But 96 from 59, 11 fours, 1 6. In terms of sort of like a display of talent, I, I mean, he hit a four to basically every dial on the clock. Um, what did he get? 11. Maybe he didn't hit one to third man, I think. At it. But if he'd got one to third man, I reckon he'd have been able to go around the whole um, dial there. A little bit of a shame for him. I think it would have been good. It would have been a really good narrative right now to be talking about how he finished it off. Um, yeah, definitely. But it, it, it showed a side, or to, oh, I saw a side from, from him today that, that maybe indicates he isn't as one-dimensional a T20 player as you know, I thought he was. I don't know about you. Yeah, it kind of comes across as someone who's maybe not as dynamic to start and ends off, but Today it was him who kind of took the onus upon himself rather than you'd maybe expect it to be Matthew Wade who would be the faster starter, but um, it was good to see Gill's got that in his locker, but just kind of ran out of steam at the end. I was looking back at the his innings and noticed his last boundary was in the 13th over. I think he went 16 balls up to his wicket without hitting a boundary, so he just kind of, just kind of stuttered away a bit towards the end, but the, certainly up to he got to like 80 odd he was so fluent yeah he was he he, he was um yeah he was a sight to behold um and I, I i really enjoyed that and i hope we see more of it as well i mean it's it's he's he, he i i think i've maligned him and i feel unfair i feel like i've been unfair on him maybe in the past if, if this is if this is the real shipman gill then um is you know a hell of a talent um there uh, the, the 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 final thing maybe before we revisit and the final over one last time, I thought, was, was Punjab's bowling overall. 
Um, now, I think most people would acknowledge that it's the weaker of the two, um, the two parts of their of their team. Um, we saw we saw them try something a little bit different today, in that they they kept three of Rahul Chahar's overs until the back half of the innings, maybe to try and well, I think to try and slow um, Gujarat down a little bit. It didn't necessarily work. I think he went for forty runs. Um, so he did he did pick up he did pick up a wicket, didn't he? Um, he did, yeah. Do you think there's anything with the personnel they got that they could do a little bit differently to maybe not look so weak in that department? Um, I, I don't know, because I suppose if you bring Benny Howell in, then he's kind of a spinner. Like, he's yeah. kind of both. So he kind of backs up Jahar. I don't, they've not used William Livingston as much as I thought they would as a, another spinner as well. And the seamers, it seems to be Rabada kind of weeds the attack. And I like our steep sing as well. I think he's really good. But other than that, it looks like they have players that teams can get after a bit. I thought... Uh, Ishan Perel might have had a go by now. He's someone we might see later in the tournament, but they do have other options like Howell, Perel, Bowen, Livingston a bit more. Um, so there's a lot to like about their attack, even though it doesn't come across as the most potent attack in the in the league. Yeah, I think that's their problem, isn't it? Really, is that the you sort of get out of the power play. Um, Aurora looks like he might take power play wickets. He moves the ball around a little bit, and and Rabada. Although he traditionally hasn't, looks like he that is the sort of bowler that you'd think might take wickets in the power play. He took yeah. one today, um, but it's that it is that sort of aside from Chahar, it doesn't look like there's somebody who's going to take any wickets until the death, and I think that's a little bit of a weakness. Um, yeah, teams than... seem like they're able to kind of glide through the middle overs against them a lot easier than other teams. Uh, the final thing then, let's just talk about Tawasha one more time. 13 off three balls, um, two sixes. Uh, how, you know, how good is he? Because I'm still not 100% sure about this. And this is the third time he's played an innings like this. Um, or, or, or sort of a game-breaking innings. Um, but he's, he's like a non-bowling number six or seven. Uh, <laughs> who they paid nine crore for? I mean, he's probably paid back the nine crore with the uh, the innings from the in their first match, I think, and against uh, Lucknow and and um, the inning the innings today. Um, I don't know. What I, I, it's a mystery man to me, Ronan. Yeah, I know he's someone who I don't know. He doesn't really really jump out at all when when you see him. But those last couple of innings he's had, he's so destructive. But he just seems to go under the radar completely. Yeah, um, I, I, it is a joy to watch him do that. And I, I, I think final thing on this game from me anyway is I do feel a little bit sorry for Odin's. Um Because that over started well. He actually bowled all right in the middle overs. And then to, to basically throw it away. Um, it was just two balls that didn't go his way. That was it. Two balls and that. And the, he had the insurance policy of that one extra run as well that he threw into the outfield. Um, I yeah, I just, <laughs> I I mean, I I don't think there's any universe in which David Miller hits hits those two ball for sixes. Um, well, maybe maybe 2013 universe, but <laughs> like, not 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 anymore. Um, and he got to actually back on strike, you know, poor guy, poor guy. Basically. I know. Yeah, I wanted him to do well and close it out, but it just didn't happen. I so did I. I mean, I I wanted. I don't want to get to the end of the IPL and have like a losing predicting prediction record. It's six and ten, which I like. You know, it's it's a bit of a deficit yeah. there. I was like seven nine. You know, okay, um, two games. That's two games. By the end of the weekend, I could be in the lead. Now I'm no. bat- <laughs> battling to get back to parity. Um, it's it's a disaster. Uh, anyway, that's. Well, I mean, that was that game. Um, maybe the best the IPL so far well, there's been there have been a few um i just want to remind people who are listening and watching to make sure you hit subscribe and follow on whatever platform you are doing the watching and listening on if you're on youtube as well if you can hit like um that is extremely useful for tricking the out well not tricking the algorithm let's get that clear um for telling the algorithm that this is top quality content <laughs> and and spreading the word um, we'll move on to yesterday's game. I don't think we'll take as long on this because um, I, I know you're going out for dinner, Ron. Um, 
Delhi batted first. They scored 149 for three. It was a really weird innings. Uh, Prithvi Shaw scored 61 of the first 67 runs. Um, David Warner got four from 12 in his return to the side. Um, it's, it, you know, 149 never looked like it was going to be enough. Um, uh, Lucknow, though, took their I really took their time about this. Made it an interesting game for, <laughs> yeah. for everyone to watch. <laughs> and, and won it with, uh, with three matches to spare and six wickets in hand. Um, the, the main thing, actually, the sort of that I... I mean, there's two things that I thought about this, this, this match. One, 149 for three batting first is like a real score from 2004 or something like that. It's, it's just such an odd total to end up on and actually really clearly shows how tame Delhi, Delhi were in the middle of um, And then I think the other thing is, is maybe LSG missing out on a, on a net run rate boost by also sort of doing the same thing and taking forever to get to what was a very makeable total. Uh, total. Uh, I don't know what you thought of this game, uh, Ronan. What's going on with Delhi? Yeah, they've had a poor start. I think that Rishabh Pant and Sarfra's partnership was just weird. Like they just took so long to get going. And then, like, the last three overs, they were smashing it everywhere. Where was this the last four or five overs before yes. this? Because Pan, I think, is a reasonably slow starter. I was looking at his... I bought this thing. I don't know if you follow Static 357 on Twitter. He does loads of good IPL stuff. He put out this massive preview pack. And um, he has, like, all these cool stats for nerds like me. And as Richard Pan's 10-ball strike rate. And his is 109. Ooh. And the average is 119. So that with Milan. He is, yeah, he's a slow starter. And I think even yesterday he was like three off ten balls. He walked out in Maiden as well. So it was just strange. Because that's the balance between that ending up three down at the end, but with a rubbish total. And then Punjab end up like eight or nine down, but they managed to get up to 190. Yeah, I think someone pointed this out to me on Twitter, actually. At one point, uh, Rishabh Pant, Rodman Powell and David Warner faced, I think, 36 balls between them for 11 runs. It was, you know, something really, really quite bizarre. With maybe it's 33 balls, you know, like a third of the innings, basically. Um, or a quarter, 25% of the innings. Hold on, let's see the math. Yeah, 25% That's of the That's basically innings, a yeah. whole power play for 11 runs. Yeah, and it was... It was <laughs> You know, Warner and Rothman Powell, I've got serious reservations about whether he should be in the IPL. Um, I think he had a really good innings at a really good time against England, didn't he? Just yeah, before. had a couple of useful day outs. <laughs> and, and landed himself a £400,000 contract, um, which is all right. You know, like I'm not going to begrudge anybody making their money, but um, I am sort of looking at this lineup and being like, well, pretty sure very good. Like one of the best opening batters I think you could have, particularly bearing in mind he's local talent. Warner, I don't know if he's still got it in the IPL. He looked okay at the yeah, World Cup. Yeah, he's still quite hot and cold. Yeah. Um, the, I, I did think that maybe with some with the, the expansion and maybe some easier bowlers around for him to hit, it, it might be a bit more like IPL, um, <clears throat> a bit more like World Cup Warner. Strikes at 135, averages 35. You know, serviceable, but not great. Four from 12. I don't want to read too much into it too soon, but it didn't look great. Uh, and then Rothman Powell three from ten. It's I, I, my my worry with them with with Warner Powell and Pant. Now that you raise his his ten ball strike rate, there is that they've got three players two three four, none of whom can suddenly lift the rate if 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 something or if you if you need to do that um, as as they basically did in this match. Or 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 or, or, or may, maybe another way to look at that is none of them are able to take advantage of, of the start that Pritvi Shaw gave them. 61 from 34 balls opening the innings. You you should be, you know, a good 20% of the way to winning that match just based on 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 that knock. And the well, the next three guys have more or less completely cancelled that out. Safraz Khan hasn't covered himself in glory either with 36 from 28. Um, yeah, when your opener's getting 60 off 30 and the team ends up only getting 140. It's just strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does um, that happen? And, uh, and we've seen like Aksha Patel and Lalit Yadav hit the ball around in this, in this, um, in this IPL. It's not Shardul Takas batting at, uh, what's that? Seven, eight, at eight for them. That's not, that's not a bad six, seven, eight 
Um, it might might not be the best, but it's not it's not six seven eight where you need to be thinking let's let's protect these guys. I mean, like Rajasthan Royals. Sometimes I think you look at their top order, and even when things are going well, they don't kick on to the next gear because they know that Rian Parag is like what well, the tail begins at oh, five. <laughs> yeah, oh exactly. <laughs> so they, they don't have to do that here. I, I, yeah, I just I it, it was such a a strange innings. I, I was happy that they did get going in the end and um, at least make it an interesting match. Um, from, on the on the flip side, the Super Giants batting Kale Rahul twenty four from twenty five. Another odd innings. From people on people who listen to this podcast reg- regularly will probably know our thoughts on that. But th- I, I don't really know what you're you're doing scoring twenty four from twenty five. Um, Especially when the guy at the other end smacking it everywhere. Yeah, Quentin in the court got them off to a rapid start. And... Well, he scored more than half the runs. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Evan Lewis, uh, I mean, yeah, Evan Lewis gets out to the off spinner and it makes Jadeja look even more stupid than not bowling Mo and Ali to, to either of them in that in that first match. CSK. And then uh, I guess the other big talking point is Unric Norkia's return to the side, which lasted 2.2 overs because he beamed two people at 90 mph. Um, did you think there was maybe a lack of fitness there or was it a dewy ball or... You know, is Anrik Norkia maybe just a little bit of a, a a guy prone to spraying it sometimes? Yeah, I don't know. I've I i can not recall seeing him bowl as badly as that before. Like whenever he normally bowls, he's usually so reliable. But yesterday just seemed like one of those days. His first game back from injury and he was just rusty, and it just, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Yeah, it was. I mean, if you look at the the economy rates, everyone on that team, 6.5, 5.25, 7.9, 5.5, 8.45, and 15. So he's more than <laughs> twice as bad economy-wise than the... Or, no, sorry, not quite twice as bad, but basically twice as bad as the next worst guy. And that's Kaldeep Yadav, who had to sort of complete the over Lockyer you left. Um, mm. and, and I think... Um, did Kroon up and hit six there? Um, uh, it's... Or Quinton de Kock hit him for a six, like a well set Quinton de Kock. Um, hit him about a bit. Um, I, 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 I think the more interesting questions about this match, um, because although Badoni you know hits those runs in the last over, it wasn't that close. I didn't think. I think the the more interesting questions are about whether Delhi are able to cl- claw this back because they were quite listless. They didn't look like a team where I thought. So, you know, Mumbai have lost the matches they've lost. But I can still see Mumbai winning 8 of 11 matches. You know, I, I still think, yeah. I still believe in that batting order. I still believe in Bumrah. And I, and, and, I, and I still believe in Tymel Mills. So I think the pieces are sort of there. Delhi, I just didn't see it yesterday. No, I thought when they had Warner and Norkia back, it would have made a difference. But both of them were poor yesterday, so it just made it look even worse. <laughs> yeah, um... I, I I wonder. I, yeah, I wonder about Rothman Powell as well. I mean, didn't they have Mitch Marsh um, as a, a potential replacement? Now he's got an injury. I don't know if he's the solution, um, <laughs> if I, if I'm honest. But um, I I think there's a, f- a few questions for Ricky Ponting to answer. There, he does give good speeches though. So if anyone's going to get the the team out of a funk, it will be Ricky Ponting, and it will be on Twitter for us to <laughs> to, to look at. Probably released after the game. Because uh, you don't want to do a good speech and then lose, and and then everyone can see the speech, and then everyone will be able will know that no bearing on the. Um, well, maybe <laughs> I don't know, Rhoda. Maybe yeah. maybe actually he <laughs> maybe he only gives like two speeches a year, but they're really impactful. So he's like keeping his speech in his pocket for now until saving people... it for the right moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, like Al Pacino from um, was is it? It's not the longest yard, is it? A- any given Sunday. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and luck now is uh, obviously the the flip side to the the question of whether Delhi are any good is is our luck now, despite playing in a scaly shirt and despite having the ball eater opening the batting, and despite you know, kind of being a bit of a weird T Twenty team all round. I think are they actually are they for real? Can you see them making the playoffs? I don't know. They just they just come across to me so weird. I don't know. There's just something about them. I think because I've been betting with Sky, you can bet who to win the power play, 
and I've bet luck no to win the power play every game they've played and they've lost it every game. <laughs> but the reason I'd do it is their top three. I thought KL would have fired for them, but he's been poor. And then the cock and Evan Lewis is a top three. I'm like, oh, they'll be a lot better than other teams' top three batters um, to go gung-ho in the power play. But they've managed to lose every power play. The worst one was against Chennai when they brought on the left-arm spinner to Moeen Ali, and that over went for loads. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they so brought on three now, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was... Uh, I mean, that's what I, it, that's what I mean about them. If you were going to... if you when, yeah. we, when we're saying they're weird, they do things like that, like things that defy belief. So you know Moeen Ali is a really good hitter of spin. Maybe don't bowl any spinners in the power play to him. But if you are, especially don't bowl one that, that can only spin the ball into him and isn't really an elite version of, of that type of bowler. And <laughs> yeah, they did. And that's after what he was comes sort of across set. making me that's why I find them so weird. Like they're winning games, but they make so many strange mistakes and then it doesn't come back to bite them. So they keep getting away with them. Yeah, um I, I do think I do think the perhaps um, we've seen sort of the best of them to some extent. Like, uh, I, I think the Cox batted well in basically every single match. Now, he is a really good player, but there, there are a few weaknesses that people know about the Cox, and, and I don't know if that's been exploited yet, or, or perhaps another way to look at that is that people have made, have, you know, have brought the spinner on. But I think there was one in this game, actually, where he sort of chipped a ball through cover, like just at head height, it, like, an, it, like a really odd-looking shot for a, a top order batter to play um, but it might have been the seventh over so the, the field has spread and it just went for a single but well <laughs> you're out to that you're out a lot if you just sort of dangle your bat kind of at a 10 degree angle and chip balls up into the ring like that that that's that's how batters get out and he wasn't he gets 80 from 52 um, and they've they've had Deepak Huda um, play well in in Two or three. I think I think Deepak Huda's like five runs behind his best ever total for an IPL after four matches, which is you know you, you probably weren't banking on Deepak Huda being like a solid number four when you put this team together. Yeah, true. Uh, Kru now Panja's batting at five and like not stinking the place out. There's probably two places too high for him. But Dhoni, he was a guy who'd batted once in the side Mushtaq Ali Trophy and he has been genuinely good so far. Um, Jason Holders bowled two of the four overs in the tournament, or two of the four final overs in the tournament that haven't gone for a boundary. Now, like Holder is like a really improving, I think, T20 bowler, um, T20 player all round. That's probably slightly above where you'd expect him to be. Like you, you would maybe, if, if you bowled the last overs bowled by Holder, probably you're thinking that's going to go for twelve runs, and he's bowled two overs that have gone for five. They're, they're, you know, reasonably significant margins. Another seven runs for Delhi here. Well, they still probably win, luck now, but um, a lowish scoring game. Might have made a difference. Um, anything else on this match? Um, I don't think so. I think we covered most of it. I think the only other thing maybe with luck now is middle order that looks a wee bit fragile. They've got Stoinis to come in, so they might shuffle things about and that will sure things up in the middle, but other than that, yeah, strange team. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Uh, let's quickly review or preview the weekend then. I'll try and get through this in five, ten minutes, I think. So Chennai Super King, Sunrise was Hyderabad, the Battle of the Basement Boys, uh, tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock UK time. Um, who do you fancy for that? Is there anything particular to look out for? Um, I would probably say Chennai. I just think Sunrisers are really bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you're among friends on, on, on that one. I, I, I think Chennai have got some reasonable players. I, I don't think they've quite figured it out yet, and I don't think they're going to make the playoffs because starting with a minus three head start for a team that's probably marginal in the first place isn't a great position to be in. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they won half the matches they've got left. Um, and, you know, finished with six wins or five wins. They're, they've got some pretty good players. Some rights, I don't think really got any players. <laughs> no, <laughs> I like Umran Malik. He bowls fast. That's about it. <laughs> it's, it's worth watching Umran Malik. And I, like everyone wants Kane Williamson to do well at some point, don't they? But um, yeah, I don't know if you'd necessarily say Kane Williamson is good is the, the, the issue there. And maybe the same for Umran Malik as well. As fun as it is to watch him, um, you don't have any idea where the ball's going. That's maybe a little bit exploitable. 
in the IPL. Uh, in the afternoon, we've got what well, it was, is a pretty huge game, I think, for Mumbai now. Uh, they're taking on Royal Challengers Bangalore, who have looked decent. Do RCB, they'll have Maxwell back. Will they have um, Hazelwood back for this as well? Are they going to be fully fit and, and ready to go? Potentially, yeah. Who would he try to think who he would slot in for in their team? Because so, they've looked decent so far. So I think Willie comes out for Hazelwood, um, yeah. doesn't he? And then, um, uh, is it Romario Shepard or Maxwell? Um, which is a pretty... Oh, or Shafane Rutherford, sorry, not Romario Shepard. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this, the R's and the S's, you know, I'm in the ballpark. And, and the West <laughs> Indies. Um, uh, I, I, like, Maxwell for Rutherford's a pretty substantial upgrade, um, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hazelwood's are probably an upgrade on, on Willie as well, although I think Willie's bold. He's done himself a, a justice in the, in the tournament so far. Um, where, where, who, do you, who, do you, who do you think's the favourite for that one? Um, I'd... I want to edge with Bangalore, but now that Mumbai are almost in that must-win territory, they always seem to pull out of the bag, so... Kind of, it strikes me as one of those kind of games that could just go with a time toss because it'll be so close. But I'll maybe edge RCB because I think I kind of back them to make the final um, before the tournament. So I'll stick with them. Cool. Uh, well, I think I think we did as well. I think Ross said they were going to win the whole tournament. So um, there's that. Uh, the the chat is saying that Hazelwood will not be available, so he'll be available from the twelfth, which is maybe their game after or two games time. Um, that, that could make a difference, I suppose. I, you know, for to play Devils Africa, I'm going to say Mumbai. Um, I, I think, I think we should see the the top order together. You know, Surya Kumar Yadav will have had an extra innings under his belt. Like, hopefully, we'll sort of hit the ground running. It took him a while to get going in the in the last match, um, and they'll have another. I, 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 they're bowling. They're still. They're still. I still don't really know who their fifth bowler is and, and how they. They work around that, especially after Daniel Sams went around the park. But we also haven't seen the best of Boomer, you know. And if Boomer bowls well, it it kind of makes up for the fact that you've got a little bit of a hole there, I think. Um, or maybe Boomer is bad now. I mean, that <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's something uh, possible possible to consider. Uh, so moving to Sunday, uh, we have uh, in the morning game, Kolkata Knight Riders v Delhi Capitals. Um, I, I think Kolkata are looking pretty good. Um, I think they've got they're they're playing a good brand of cricket. I think they've got really clear role definition. I think that the eight overs spin they can bowl in the middle of the game is crippling for a lot of IPL sides that that don't necessarily take advantage of their potential weaknesses up top and at the death. I think Delhi will probably fall into that trap as well. So I'm going to go with Kolkata there. Disagree. No, I would back you up with going Kolkata as well. I've been impressed with them so far. Like they've been, obviously, you're talking about how good the spinners have been in the the middle, but even up front, the seamers like Umesh Yadav has been outstanding in the power play so far. And now that they've got Cummins back to back him up as well, um, the the only thing that kind of sees him vulnerable is Andre Russell when he comes on at the death. Sometimes goes around the park a wee bit, um, all those times. But other than that, they've been really good especially just restricting teams with the ball as well and then they've got the bat and to, to knock it off uh, whenever they've needed Russell to come up Trump's with a bat he's done it so yeah I'd say Kolkata again for that one after his first game I, I, I said on this show that I thought Umesh Yadav could win the purple cap and I didn't bet on it I wish I had now <laughs> I, 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 far away. I, I think well I've mostly got nine wickets already he's got ten games to if he takes a wicket a game I think it's nailed on and um, you know, teams will probably adapt slightly to to him. I, I I suspect that he wasn't the focus of the uh, the analytics meeting in the the first few matches of the season, and now people will probably do a little bit more work on on, on that, and maybe that'll nullify him slightly. But, um, you know, even if he takes seven more wickets, sixteen sometimes gets you in the in in the frame. Um, so, uh, you know, it's. It's money. It's money. Is it money lost? It's not really money lost, is it? I haven't. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity. Final match then, uh, Rona, before we wrap up. Uh, Rajasthan Royals v. Uh, Lucknow Super Giants. Um, 
I think this is actually a tough one to call, so I'm going to let you go first on here, and and then I will um, well, well, I think. Yeah, I think um, I prefer Rajasthan, although I think they are quite reliable on Josh Butler. Obviously, he's been outstanding so far, um, and with him just not batting too deep, and since Coulter Nile got injured, that kind of fifth bowler option is kind of up in air a wee bit for them so I don't know if that'll get exploited a wee bit because I think even if they were to bring in like Jimmy Neesham or something it doesn't doesn't come across to me as a bore, an IPL 4 over bore um, or if they were to bring in like Obed McCoy it kind of disrupts that middle order even more so they're just, it's like they're, they're missing one thing in the team which could be exploited but um, yeah I still think they'll win I like Butler Jaiswal, Samson, Hetmeyer. Like the top five's good, but then the batting after that just kind of falls off a cliff a bit. <laughs> uh, Google, the Google win probability predictor here has this exactly 50 50. Um, so, you know, the, the, the biggest thinkers, the greatest mathematicians and coders in the world <laughs> can't, 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 can't call it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, um, I think, I think it, it's, it's got the makings of quite a good game. This. I think it's a good, it's a good, good Sunday afternoon. Um, fixture to have on to clash with Man City we <laughs> Liverpool in the Premier League oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'd maybe I think it'll probably come down to to an individual performance and I, I wonder um, looking through here whether the, that possibly favours the Royals uh, slightly maybe their better players are just a bit better I don't know if that's really great analysis from me but I'm going to go with the Royals as well um, <laughs> to, to wrap things up. We had uh, one question in on Twitter. We had a few questions in on Twitter, but one I'm going to ask you before we wrap up from Mask. Um, who are you backing to win the IPL based on the performances so far? Um, ooh, based on performances so far, maybe Kolkata. But before the tournament, I got a five or three bet and I put it on. RCBV Punjab to be the final, which was twenty five to one. So that was some the bet. So well, I think they're RCB in Punjab before the tournament, but now I quite like Kolkata. Yeah, I, 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 if I was going to answer it, I'd, I'd actually maybe say I'd be most impressed, kind of, by RCB and bowling. I think, I think adding Maxwell back to that team takes it up. Just I mean, you know, no, no disrespect to Shafane Rutherford. Um, but he isn't uh, Maxwell, and neither is David Willey, and they've been batting like four and five. <laughs> it put Maxwell in there, and um, he's worth about four of those players, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, that's that's that for this episode. Um, Ronan, where can people find you if you want to point them in your direction? Um, yeah, so just on Twitter at Ronan underscore 45 or my page where I look at under 24 players specifically with... Uh, just articles, bit of analysis, some graphs and uh, some written stuff is at Scouting Cricket for that. So those are the, the, the main places. I did mean to ask you actually on, on, on that note, is there a player in this IPL that you've, you've been most impressed by in that kind of bracket? Um, oh, I think off the top of my head. I'll probably, as soon as we stop recording, I'll think <laughs> of about six. <laughs> um... Well, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you on the spot. I want at least one name here um, from the group. Shubman Kill, I found this out today. It's only 22. I mean, I, there's, you can't really use Shubman Kill, but um, I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. when he learns to hit the ball in the air. If he learns to hit the ball, like it might be unstoppable. What's he's got? I don't, have you got a name? Um, I'm still looking through his teams, trying to think of. Because I did have someone in mind, and I'm looking through the lineups, and I can't find them. No, oh, well, maybe next time. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, this has been an episode of the Cricket Podcast. We can be found on Twitter and Instagram at the Cricket Pod. Uh, use the code TCP22 at SeriousCricket.co.uk for ten percent off equipment for the season starts. And head over to Patreon to support the show directly. Really helps us loads. If you can go to Patreon. Uh, just four pound a month, you get bonus shows, bonus content, access to our Discord, data, um, and some other bits um, as well. So, found a player now. Go on, go for, go for it. Go for it. Tilak Varma at Mumbai absolutely oh, yeah. smashes spin. I like him. Yeah, he was. He has been excellent. I mean, that that line. This is why I don't think Mumbai are out of it. Um, 
you know that 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 lineup is uh, Rohit and Ishan. Maybe Rohit's over the hill, but maybe he isn't. Surya Kumar Yadav or Varma at three for Pollard at five. Tim David or uh, Brevis at six, or like Brevis maybe at three. I mean, like they're just those six <laughs> players in some formation is is um, it's it's incredible. It's really incredible. Um, anyway, thanks very much for listening and watching. Cheerio, everyone.